The Gemara says in the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse number 38, Daniel translates dreams for Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, the Midrash says that he was the son or the grandson of Shlomo Amelech, but also destroyed the Bet Migdash as a measure for measure punishment from Hashem for the mistake that Shlomo made, made marrying the Queen Shva. But nonetheless, Nebuchadnezzar was given a prophecy in a dream that the prophet Daniel told us, told him what it is, that he'll be the most powerful king until the Mashiach. Now, Nebuchadnezzar did not like it. Why didn't he like it? He says, why only until Mashiach? Why only until the Mashiach? Why can't I be the strongest king ever? It's not enough to control the whole world while I'm alive. I want to control the whole world even after I'm dead, forever. It wasn't enough for him. So what did he do? Nebuchadnezzar said, see, in a dream, I dreamt at the top of the idol was gold and then silver and so on and so forth. But it's different material representing different kingdoms that would follow me. So this is what I'm going to do. To fix this prophecy, I'm going to make an idol that's all gold. And I'm going to make all of the nations bow to it. And in chapter 3 of the book of Daniel, the test of all tests is given where this enormous monstrosity of an idol, this golden idol, enormous, enormous idol that Nebuchadnezzar had built is raised and as a celebration he commands all of the leaders to come of all the nations and bow to it or die. Now everyone knew, everyone knew, Nebuchadnezzar doesn't joke around. Including Am Yisrael. Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah who are also called a Shadrach, Neshach, and a Vendigo. By Nebuchadnezzar, he called them different names to fit the uh, culture of Bavel, of Babylon. They were given a test. Why? They were the ones that had to bow to this idol. So they went to the prophet, and they said to the prophet, is Hashem going to make a miracle for us or not? Meaning, if we don't bow, He's going to throw us in the fire. Is Hashem going to save us for standing up for Him or no? Hashem says to the prophet, tell them no. If they want to die in Kiddush Hashem, they're welcome to do it. I will not save them. The prophet tells them, and they all walk away from the prophet with complete intention that they're going to jump into the fire. They're not going to bow to this idol. They're going to die on Kiddush Hashem. In chapter 3, verse number 19, Nebuchadnezzar sees that these three tzaddikim refused to bow to the idol and it says Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury and the form of his face became contorted at Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. The Midrash says that his face physically changed as a result of his anger. That's how angry he got. Because it was a public desecration of his face. Public desecration of, of, of who he was. These three Jews, they're not going to bow to my idol when all of these powerful kings are. He got so angry, his face changed. And he commanded them to throw these three tzaddikim into the fire. Akadosh Baruch Hu, of course, saved them 
as he intended originally. And when the Prophet, right after the three tzaddikim left, the Prophet asked Hashem, how come you're not going to save them? Hashem says, I am going to save them. I just didn't want them to know that I'm going to save them. Because I want them to get the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem. But if they know that I'm going to save them anyway, there's no mitzvah. There's no free choice. So it's not that Hashem changed his mind. He just wanted them to get the mitzvah. And already from the beginning, he told the prophet, I'm going to save them. It's written in the Torah. So now the question the Gemara says, Masechah Psachim, where did these three tzaddikim get the strength to do this? Now, you can tell me you love God until you're blue in the face. Come on now. You're jumping into a fire? You're jumping into a fire? It's not an easy decision, even if you're a righteous person. Many righteous people have failed in the past. To jump into a fire? It's a big thing. You know I know it's a big thing? It's written in the Tanakh. It's not written in some storybook. If it's written in the Tanakh, it's, not a, it's a big deal. So now the question is, where did they get this strength? Where did they learn this from? The Gemara says they learned it from the frogs in Egypt. Frogs in Egypt. Why? The plague of the frogs, after Paro said, enough, I'm going to let you go, Moshe Rabbeinu prayed to Hashem and said, for the fro- Hashem commanded for these frogs to leave Egypt to leave this place, that place, this place, that place, and go into the water, go into the fire, go into the ovens, go, just go away. So now the Gemara says, wait a minute, hold on a second. You're saying that Chaninya, Mishael, and Azariah, they learned, they got the courage, they got the chidush, the insight to go jump in the fire because they learned it from the frogs. Why? Because the frogs, after HaKadosh Baruch Hu commanded them to leave, what happened? Some of them jumped into the fire. They jumped into the fire. Why? Because the frog said, okay, I can go and jump in the water. I can go and run away, but that will take more time. And Hashem's will is not going to be fulfilled for those extra few minutes it's better that I jump into a fire and serve Hashem now than let Hashem wait another two minutes. The frogs thought this. So the Chachamim say, but wait a minute. But that means that Hashem did command him to jump into the fire. Because he said, jump into the fire. So comes Rav Yitzchak, Rav Yaakov Naiman. And he says, yes. You see, Rabotai, it's not just that they learned from the frogs. They could have easily said, learn from Abraham Avinu. Why does he learn from the frogs? Because if you look at the Psukim in Sefer Shmot, it says, Shem said, go, fire, water, this place, that place, meaning you have a bunch of choices. You go into the fire, or you go into the water, or you can run away, or you can go uh, all types of places. Just like Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, they also had multiple choices. The fire wasn't the only choice. They could have simply ran away. They could have hidden. They could have done a lot of things. They could have committed suicide. But they chose the fire. Why? Because that's Mesirut Nefesh. Mesirut Nefesh Rabotai Karim is when you have multiple options but you choose the hardest option because that's the will of Hashem. Yeah, I can serve Hashem and pray at 11 o'clock in the morning because praying at 6 in the morning is hard. That's not Mesirut Nefesh. Mesirut Nefesh is to pray at 6. Yeah, I can... I could go to a shiur, but I'm only going to stay for the first half hour. Why? Because two hours is long and i got to wake up early. Okay, so it's good to learn for a half hour, but it's not Mesirut Nefesh. You know what Mesirut Nefesh? Staying till the end. 
and sleeping less as a result. Why? Because I want this Torah. I can give a hundred, two hundred dollars easy because I have it in my pocket. A thousand, two thousand I also have, but that's going to hurt my pocket a little bit. No problem. A hundred dollars is a mitzvah. Two hundred dollars is a mitzvah. It's not a problem. I'm not saying it's a sin, but it's not Eved Hashem. Eved Hashem is I'm going to do more. Why? It's the hardest option. It's the will of Hashem. That's what I'm going to do. It's a hard life. Shlomo HaMelech met a frog one time, the Midrash says. And the frog tells him, I'm more important than you. Shlomo HaMelech says, why are you more important than me? He says, I, you just think that I'm just like making noises all day. What you don't realize is that every word that comes out of my mouth, I'm sanctifying Hashem's name. All day I'm saying, Bauch Hashem, 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 all day. All day I'm saying, Bauch Hashem. No one does it like me. Every day we get a test to be like the frogs. We get the easy choice, mediocre choice, hard choice. Easy learning, go learn a five-minute clip. Higher learning, read the first part of the weekly parasha with some commentary. Hardest learning, learn some serious gemara. Break your head, break your teeth. Learn for five hours straight without eating, drinking, or wasting your time. And then finish the five hours and you don't even know what you learned. And continue again the next day. Hard! That's what you got you have the choice. You can learn. If you could watch Rabbi Yaron Ruven, five-minute clip. Oh, wow, Rabbi, you're the best. You changed my life. It's good, it's good. Thank you. Thank you. I have more shirt than Shemaim. Shtabach Shiro, thank you. I'm not saying don't. You want to be an Eved Hashem, you have to add some Gemara to it. You have to add some Shuchan Aruch to it. You have to add Poskim. You have to toil. You have to sleep less. You have to do this. You have, you have to change your life. Why? Eved Hashem. Not easy. We are very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the Shurim that we do, myself, Rabbi Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat